This lesson is going to look at chemical reactions. We're going to look at the symbols used when we write these reactions on paper, as well as some examples. So you'll have plenty of practice with this by the time we're done. Well, chemical reactions happen around us all the time. Um, what I want you to do to begin with is to look at these clips that are following this slide um, and describe the chemical changes or the chemical reactions that you observe. The next thing that I want you to do is to go back and review the evidences of chemical changes. Remember it's those things that we look for in lab to let us know that a chemical change has happened. If you don't remember what they all are, go back and look at your notes and the videos from Unit 1. Okay, so you watch the video clips. It's really great to describe the reactions that you see on paper, but sometimes we want to write a chemical equation instead. An equation is going to represent a chemical reaction. And you see here the most general form of a chemical reaction is to have the starting materials or the reactants on the left side of the equation and the products or the new materials that are made during the reaction on the right side of the arrow. Now the arrow is kind of like an equal sign in a math equation. This is what separates the beginning materials from the final materials. And the arrow simply means that A plus B yields or produces the new products C and D. There are a couple of different ways to write a chemical equation. You can write a chemical sentence, which gives you the names of the elements or the compounds that are used, or you can write a word equation. If you look at that definition, it's the exact same thing. So take a look at the examples at the bottom of this slide and I think you'll see the difference. A chemical sentence only uses words to describe the process that's happening in the reaction, while a word equation combines words and the symbols that belong in the equation. Now speaking of symbols, in order to write a good chemical or equation or a word sentence, you are going to have to know um, the symbols that are used in chemical reactions. So let's take a look at those. The first four symbols I want you to know about are just phase symbols. S for solid, L for liquid, G for gas, and the fourth one here is AQ, which is aqueous. It's just a solution or a substance that's dissolved in water. Now some other symbols that you're going to need to know are the last ones on this slide. The plus sign here is what we use to separate the formulas for our elements and our compounds in an equation. That arrow there is the yields that we looked at before. Every once in a while you'll see a double arrow. That just means that the reaction is reversible. It can go forwards or backwards. The next symbol that you see there is a special one. It's a triangle. It represents that a reaction must be heated in order to occur. Now you're going to find that triangle written on top of the yield arrow in an equation. And same thing with this last symbol, a catalyst, is a chemical that speeds up a chemical reaction, but it's not used up during a reaction like a reactant would be. So to keep it separate from the reactants, you're going to write it also on top of the arrow for yields. Um, platinum is the catalyst that I gave you in this slide, but a catalyst can be any chemical. It's not only platinum. That's just the one example that I chose. Let's take a look at some examples. So this first um, 
part here is a chemical sentence. Um, it's potassium chlorate decomposes upon heating to form potassium chloride and oxygen gas. I've written the chemical equation below there. So you can see that potassium chlorate is the starting material. It's on the left side of the arrow. Upon heating, I've represented with that triangle on top of the arrow and it's going to form potassium chloride, that's KCl, the first product on the right side of the arrow, plus oxygen gas. And I've written O2 with a little g in parentheses to indicate the phase of that oxygen. So that sentence and that chemical equation give you the same information. The last bullet on this slide gives you the word equation. So I've combined the words from the chemical sentence and the symbols from the chemical equation to give you that last one. But again, if you look at any one of these bullets, you're going to get the same information. So why do I have to write all of this and why do I have to know it? Well, there's a basic law in chemistry called the law of conservation of matter. And you're familiar with it because it states that matter can't be created or destroyed. Well, what does that really mean? What it means is that you are going to have to write equations to account for all of the atoms that are involved in your chemical reaction. For example, if your reaction starts with three hydrogen atoms on the left side of the equation, then you have to have three hydrogen atoms on the right side of the equation. You can't add any or take any away. And the way that we're going to work around that is we are going to write balanced equations so that you have the same number of each atom of every element on both sides of the equation. That's going to be one of our goals in this unit. You don't know how to do that yet. But what I want you to do now is to count the atoms that are in the examples that I gave you in your notes and see if you can see that they are not balanced the way that they're written. So that'll be a job for us to figure out in this unit. Now you are going to have to watch out for a few special elements as you write your chemical equations. And they're called the diatomic elements. Diatomic elements always occur in pairs in nature, and I've listed them here. Um, they are mainly uh, on the right side of the periodic table, so take a look at their location. Maybe can find a pattern there to help you remember which ones are diatomic. Hydrogen's the one that's kind of separated from the rest of them, but these seven definitely, and I put AT because it's probably diatomic, but nobody has proven that to be true just yet. Now to finish, uh, let's do some practice together. I know you've got lots of examples in your notes and I do want you to work on those, but let's, let's do these two together. This first word sentence says nitrogen gas and oxygen gas combine to form dinitrogen pentoxide. So write that one down and see if you can figure out what the chemical equation is for that. Go ahead and do the second one as well. Pause the video now and when you think you have your answers, hit play and I'll share mine with you. Okay, here are my answers. Nitrogen gas is one of the diatomic elements, so I put N with a subscript 2. I put the little G in parentheses because it is a gas. I added it to oxygen gas, which is also diatomic. And the combined to form is the same thing as the yield arrow. And dinitrogen pentoxide is that covalent compound N2O5. I hope you got it right. Let's look at the second one. Aluminum chloride is AlCl3. I did the charge and crisscross method because this is an ionic compound. It reacts with, that's a plus sign, Magnesium oxide is ionic. The twos reduce away, so you get MgO. To form is the yield sign. Aluminum oxide, crisscross method, Al2O3. And magnesium chloride, MgCl2. So, bring your questions, finish working all those examples that I've given you in your notes, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.